What is up everyone? Welcome back to Base Damage. Also, welcome back to Community Fridays. This week's deck list is submitted by Joker in our uh, Discord community. If you want to submit your own, go to the uh, go to our link in the description to join our Discord and submit your own deck profiles if you want. This week, we have Taking the Girlfriend Out for a Walk. Uh, it's another Data Live deck. Uh, yeah, we're going to check this out. I know what this one does. I don't know what any of the other cards in here do. So yeah let's go ahead and get right into it this looks to be blue green with oh the soul we got double crits for days so a double apology from a super genius uh choose a level one or lower character in your waiting room put in your stock and all your characters get plus one soul and then we have received power choose up to one level one or lower character in your waiting room the level one or lower character thing i don't see that i don't think i've ever seen uh, I know I have seen that somewhere, but it that's such a rare trait or a rare like uh, effect for a climax. Okay, but it's uh eight double crit trigger climaxes. Let's let's freaking go. Okay. And obviously I believe all of this is uh that all of this is centered around origami from Data Live. So it's a th this first one is Spirit Who Kills Spirits Origami. It's a 329k. Early play condition, which is really cool. Uh, four or more date characters uh, gets minus a level in hand. If it's in your center stage, all of your date characters get 1500 power. That's really strong right off the bat. Like, So then it buffs itself uh, is all of your, so it's not other. So she buffs herself up to a 10-5 and then whoever else is there. On attack, if received power is in your climax area, you can pay one stock, which the climax does generate. So you can go into climax step with zero stock and you still can pull this off. If you do, like you can attack with this first and pull it off, I should say. If uh, if you do, this gets the following ability until the end of your opponent's next turn. When the uh, when this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, you may deal one damage to your opponent. Meaning your opponent does have to be careful if they decide to just ram something into this, you can still do an additional burn one on your opponent's turn. That's really cool. So burn one, uh, obviously you still be able to do that on your turn is really cool. And you're basically doing it for free. You just have to reverse them, which, you know, if you're able to play multiples, some shape, form or fashion, you know, get that buff going. Okay, I do like that. That's interesting. Uh, one copy of Battle Stance Origami is a 3-2-10-K. When it's placed on stage from hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If, it's, if that card is level zero or lower, put it into your stock. And then when this card is placed on stage from hand, you can pitch a card. Search your deck for an event card, specifically an event, and add it to hand. Then it has an act ability to pay a stock to give a date character 1500 power until end of turn. So you get to do some more buffing. Uh, it could be interesting. Uh, he only runs one copy of this of the of this one, but you could use it to buff up this one to make certain that you get the reverses. So that is, that is a cool thing. Uh, then Sullen Rain Yoshino is a three two nine five. When this card is placed on stage from hand, you can discard a card, and if you do, put the top card of your clock into your stock. There we go. When this is placed on stage from hand, you can pay two stock, and then choose one of your opponent's characters, return it to their hand. Very interesting. I mean, the, the heal to stock is already good, but the potential removal is a very interesting touch there, I will admit. And that's it for the threes. We get to the twos with Retaliation Origami. We got an anti-change backup. It's a 2,500 backup with pay to pitch a character or send us, yeah, sack a character from your stage to your waiting room to choose an opponent's character with a level higher than their level and put it into their waiting room. So anti-change is always good. Uh, one copy of that. We got two copies of new power origami is a one, one. The fuck? Oh, okay. That must be an event. I see basic realizer gets minus one cost while in your hand. That has to be an event. Um, I'm assuming it is anyway. Oh, sorry. I do on. It is also a level assist and a, when the battle opponent of your other spirit who kills spirits, origami becomes reversed and uh, becomes reversed. You can pay one and rest this card. From, it says rest from standing specifically so it's not like uh, you can swing with her and then still get this effect off so uh, it, even if you're probably keeping her in the back row that they just put that stipulation in there just to be safe and if you do pay the cost uh, salvage back a character okay 
So I kind of want to go ahead and see what basic realizer is. Uh, it is a level three event. We'll just go ahead and take a look, see. So basic realizer is a level three, three cost counter event. Perform the following action three times, which to be fair, uh, if you do have this level one in play, it becomes a two cost, just taking, keeping that in mind. Choose one of your characters and it gets the following ability until end of turn. The character facing this card gets a minus one soul and then you put this into your memory. Okay. Can you just stack? Oh, well it says perform the following action. So you could, could you just stack that same negative soul all onto a singular character? I'm assuming you can. Okay. Interesting. Making that be a cheaper cost is kind of cool. Uh, Fall in Love Dome Natsumi is a 1-1, 2k backup. When you use this card's backup, choose one of your characters in battle, and it gets the uh, it gets memory kick. So when the battle opponent becomes reversed, you send, you can you put that character into your opponent's memory. Okay. Memory kick is definitely much more pro uh, prolific now. Uh, we have Returning to School Origami is a 1-0, 4k. If all of your characters are date, it gets a uh, 2k power, so just a constant 1-0, 6k. When the card's battle opponent becomes reversed, if Apology from a Super Genius is in your comics area, choose one level zero or lower character you're waiting in your waiting room, put it into your stock. Reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a level one or higher, put it into your hand. So you do have some kind of advantage engine off of this, and you build a... This deck seems to generate a ton of stock. Uh, even, uh, even this one was like, oh, if you top check and it's a zero, you get it, uh, you get it as a stock. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm still yawning there. There's a 1 0 4K swimsuit origami. Uh, how many copies? Two copies of this. When this card is placed on stage from hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a date or the uh, the event we mentioned before, all characters in your opponent's center stage get minus 500 power to end of turn. When this attacks, choose one of your other date characters. It gets 500. It gets, uh, it's like Shimakaze Kai. You choose a character to get 500 power times the number of all of your other date characters on field, so it can give like a 2k buff. Uh, the Yoshino, I actually know what this does. This is a anti-change uh, bottom deck reverser, but it can swap. You can pay a stock at the beginning of your opponent's attack phase to swap this character and another one of your date characters at standing. So, yeah, really good to just have this, and then your opponent's like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, early play this standby thing, and you're all, and Yoshino's like, no, you ain't. You jump right in front. So, really cool. And that's it for the ones. We're getting into the level zeros now. Uh, we have a 00500 Shame Natsumi. At the beginning of your climax phase, if there are three or more markers underneath this card, put all markers from underneath this card into your waiting room, and you may put the top card of your deck into your stock. That's a little wonky. Uh, pay one, rest this. Mill four. For each... Uh, uh, for each climax revealed, perform the following action. Look at up to three cards. Oh, okay, okay, so that's how, I was like, it has to get the markers somehow. So you top check up to three. You add one of them to your hand. Then you pick one of the other cards and put it underneath this as a marker, put the other into waiting, put the uh, rest into waiting room. Okay. Very interesting. It is very original, I will say, because I don't think I've ever seen a brainstormer give itself markers. Four copies of clothes that make one happy, origami. Woof. So 002k uh, gets a thousand power on your turn, and when your other date character is frontal, you can pay one sack of this to return that character to your hand. Uh, also, th this is also an effect I've seen a lot in terms of if another character gets frontal, pay a cost to bounce back to hand. I've seen that a lot with uh, other cards recently. Uh, happy incoming message origami is a 0015. When this is placed on stage from hand, you reveal you may reveal your hand. If you do, and there is a climax amongst those cards, all characters in your opponent's center stage get minus 500 power till end of turn. When this card is placed on stage from hand, you can pay one, pitch a climax to uh, climax swap to salvage back a climax. Okay. So it is a climax swapper, and you can just go, oh, cool, y'all are 500 weaker. Interesting. Definitely don't think I've seen that before. Um, 0015 Decisive Moment Origami. When this card is placed on stage from hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's level two or higher, put it into your stock. When this is placed on stage from hand, you can pay one, pitch one, and salvage back a date character, and then choose one of your other date characters to give it back a thousand power. Okay. Two copies of that. 
One copy of Lunchtime Miku is a 0, 0, 5, uh, 500. When this is placed on stage from hand, pay one, pitch one. Look at up to three cards from the top of your deck. Choose up to one card from amongst them. Put it into your hand, put the rest into a waiting room. And when this card direct attacks, this gets plus one soul till end of turn. So if it direct attacks anyway, you're already getting plus one soul. So if this attacks an open lane, it is swinging with minimum of three soul before any other triggers. That is a little wonky, but I mean, it's whatever. And then lastly, four copies of this Toka, Shido's Conquest Toka, the 0025. When this is put into your waiting room from stage, pay one, do yourself a damage from the top of the deck. Look at up to four cards from the top of the deck. Use up to one level one or higher card amongst them. Reveal it to your opponent, put it in your hand, put the rest into your waiting room. And we obviously also already said uh, basic realizers. Yeah, okay, so I mean... This is definitely interesting. I'm not as big of a, like, I'm not as, oh, wait, no, sorry. There's one more event. I almost skipped over this. Phantom's Persuasion, a 1-1 one, one blue event. Search your deck for a date character. Reveal it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Put this card into your memory. Okay, it's like uh, the new Alicization event. Okay, cool. So just, uh, oh, both of them go to memory. This goes to memory as well. Very interesting. Okay. But, I mean, you are you seem to be generating more stock than you know what to do with. Like the, uh, the level one combo generates a fuck ton of stock. You, you're, yeah, you're like able to play a lot. I guess that also makes up for like their early play condition. Cause you're, you know, you would be paying out the stock, but you would have such, you would have so much more stock that it's, it's within acceptable levels. If you try to drop like two of these or something, that's interesting. Okay. I definitely like it, uh, man. The Joker, this gets a, uh, uh, definitely gets the Kool-Aid seal of approval. Uh, yeah, I, I I also like Origami. She is a really cool character from Data Live. I only remember watching like the first season or two, but I liked her as a character. So yeah, uh, thank you once again uh, to Joker for submitting this deck. If you want to submit your own deck profile as well, uh, join our Discord. Uh, link in the description and go to the decklist submissions page. Uh, as long as you send a link with uh, deck log, uh, or that is for deck log, I can pull it up on this and show off the effects and uh, the cards easier. If I like it, I'll, I might make a video about it in the future. But yeah. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, please give a like and a subscribe if you want. If not, Hey, just thanks for stopping by to check it out. And yeah, uh, we will see you on the flip side. Peace out for now.